This Civ probably breaks the game the most out of all the leaders in the game, and that's something that I really enjoy. Today we're going to talk about Hammurabi of the Babylonian Empire. I'll go over his bonuses, including any Civ bonuses, and give my preferred strategy for playing as him, as well as giving a grade for each victory condition and a final overall grade. If you like this content or any other content on my channel, please consider subscribing. I'm hoping to hit 1000 subscribers by the end of the year and I'm super close, I'm at about 500 right now, so I'm halfway there. I can't get there without your help though, so I thank you for it. Please, if you give me a like and a comment, it gives me the motivation to move forward and continue making content. Hammurabi is strange and from what I see, super divisive in the community. And this is due almost entirely to the civilization ability, Inuma Ano Inlil. You have a permanent malice of minus 50% science. However, as soon as you unlock a Eureka, you instantly get the full tech. Now remember, this is just Eurekas and not inspiration, so you don't get free civics. But it is hard to understate how much of a game changer this actually is. It really breaks the game, and Babylon is impossible to balance, and should not be considered a balanced sieve, and it raises the questions of should the game be actively balanced. But this is just a sieve you play to mess around with. They're not the easiest sieve to pilot in all honesty, you can very easily outtech your production, and you can easily get to planes in the classical or medieval era and not be able to build them, but it is strong. However, it's not the free win that most people say it is, unless you know what you're doing. I'm not even done talking about this bonus, however. So let's make a couple of hypotheticals here. Let's say that you start on the coast. If you settle, boom, you get free sailing. Now let's say that in your city you have three hills. Okay, build a builder and you get free apprenticeship. With apprenticeship, you get to build an industrial zone and you unlock men at arms. If you sell off any resources that you have, you can within 20 turns buy a man at arms and kill off a neighbor very easily. But that's not all. You put down your industrial zone and boom, you get the free workshop. More about that later. Then put down a second city, build a workshop in an industrial zone there with the help of Magnus chopping out some trees, and boom, you now have industrialization, making your minds insane well before anyone else's. This is not to mention the era score that you get. If you build Rur, you can get to flight in the classical to medieval era. But let's say that that doesn't happen. Okay, that's fine. Build yourself a slinger, kill one of the many barb scouts out there, and you've got archers immediately. Build yourself three archers, and then boom, you get crossbows immediately. Build two crossbows, and then boom, you have bombards immediately. Scout well, get yourself free astrology. Meet a sieve, and get free campuses. Build a campus early, get your free library, get the early great scientist, and get universities before anyone else can. This isn't all that Babylon gets. They also get the Palgum, which is a much better water mill that gives you plus one food on all tiles in their fresh water. This lets your cities grow like crazy, and all you have to do to get it is farm a resource. You also get the Sabun Kibitum, which is a unique scout with a bit more base strength. It's not too great, but it's a good source of early scouting because it has better vision, and it's free era score. Hammurabi also gets crazy bonuses. Ninu Elusirum. Whenever you build a specialty district for the first time, you get the first building in its chain for free. This, in my opinion, is the strongest bonus in the whole Civs kit. This is crazy, and it's often forgotten due to Babylon's insane tech bonus. You get over 1500 production worth of buildings for free. Strong buildings, and you get them immediately. A free library. That gives you free scientist points before anybody else. A free amphitheater for writing points before anybody else. A free barracks, a free harbor, a free market, a free workshop, giving you all of these great people points before anyone else. And maybe the strongest thing is the free shrine, saving you so much early production. This is Babylon's true bonus, production. You get so much free production so early as Babylon. You can get apprenticeship as soon as you build your first builder. You will have industrialization about 20 turns later. This gives you plus three production on all of your mines for the rest of the game in a snowbally game like Civ. And this is not including any religious bonuses or the Ruhr Valley. You can get up to plus five, maybe plus six mines immediately almost in the game. 
with this production, you rule the game. But only if you're not completely going down the rabbit hole on Eureka's. Babylon seems like a science sieve, but in my opinion, you're not. You can't get through those late game texts. Now, I'm not saying the science is impossible as Babylon. It's actually really good, but it's not what you should see the sieve as. Those late game texts are unboostable. Now you have all the production you need to be a science powerhouse. You can build the rocket, the spaceport, you can build all those things that you need to build. But you're really slow to get to the exoplanet expedition and to get to those laser boosters for the exoplanet expedition. If you haven't taken a complete and total lead in the game, the AI are going to catch up to you. So I'm only giving them a 6 out of 10 for science. You do speed through the early game, but you fall off fast in the atomic and later eras. However, if you expand well and get those universities early, you should be so far advanced compared to everybody else that you probably will carry yourself through a science game. Babylon is also surprisingly strong for a religious game because you get the free shrine so early, but you have nothing to really convert that faith into a victory. So I'm just giving them a 5 out of 10 here. You can get a lot of early faith though, and early faith is usable on very many things. Culture is also really strong. You can get the Eiffel Tower before anyone else does. You can get to any wonder really before anybody else does. You won't be working a lot of great works though. A culture victory as Babylon is really reliant on wonders for tourism. You're also hoping that those wonders will give you culture. That'll help you get to conservation and that'll help you win through national parks or even better getting tourism off the biodome wonder. So a 6 out of 10 here. Diplomacy is also really good as Babylon. You get so much production. Diplomacy is all about production. You also get early commercial hubs giving you a lot of gold for those uh, emergencies. And then you're going to be getting a lot of military emergencies if you're playing Babylon correctly. So you have those as well. And the free building you get in your Diplo Quarter gives you a lot of envoys really quickly. Domination is obviously the choice though. Oh, sorry. Diplomacy is 6 out of 10. But yeah, domination is obviously the choice. You can't be beat in a domination game. You can get to artillery within 50 turns, honestly. <laughs> to just bank up gold, sell off all your resources, boost your way to refining and steel, buy yourself one artillery piece, and wipe out the world with an artillery piece and a warrior. As long as you can move around, you're going to take everything out. Overall, that's a 10 out of 10. An insane, insane victory. Hammurabi really changes the game, and I, unlike most people, I really embrace this oddity. I wish Civ had more leaders who just straight up broke the rules. I disagree that a primarily single player game like this should be balanced out perfectly. Some of the most popular Civs, in my opinion, Hammurabi or Ludwig or Yongla, really break the game, and I hope that in Civilization 7, we are going to get a lot more absurd leaders like this that make each playthrough more unique. Hammurabi, however, is easy to overwhelm yourself with. You have all the options you, you can possibly want, and it's easy to outpace yourself. So I'm giving a Hammurabi an A- as a sieve. I love them, but sometimes too many options means I can't make any choices. Thank you everybody for watching, and I'll be back soon with my Herald Double Feature. Remember to like this or subscribe if you enjoyed my content, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.